these two parameters are different with respect to the data types of argument so the meaning is int a here data type is a int variable is a int data type b function name is product and it returns or it gives the answer as product of three variables x y z there is only one parameter so this function is going to compiler identify this with the function with one argument dear students welcome to cs classes i am ravi kumar kr lecturer in computer science vidyasham pu college temple of excellence mysore students let us start our discussion with the new chapter chapter 8 that is function overloading and member functions now the weightage of the chapter mcq one question for one mark and again five marks one question is five marks totally there are two questions of six marks so weightage of the chapter is six marks now in this chapter we are going to cover the concepts function overloading inline function and friend functions now let us start discussing about function overloading so what is a function you know what is a function so what are functions it is a set of instructions given a name and it does a specific function or a specific task so next concept is once if you know what are functions next concept is function overloading so what is function overloading function overloading means two or more functions have the same name but differ in their number of arguments or data types of arguments now you know what are functions so each functions may have or may not have arguments or parameters so in this example if it is a function overloading means a function there are it can be more than two functions with the same name means function name remain the same but differ each functions differ in their parameter list or arguments so here c++ implements polymorphism through a function overloading and operator overloading and here you might have you might have learned in the basics of oops concept that is polymorphism so what is polymorphism in polymorphism is a behavior of an object depending on the circumstances or situation so here a one object shows different phases or it act differently depending on the circumstances or the situation so in that way so if we use function overloading it means that we are implementing a concept of polymorphism under oops concepts so and there are two types of overloading one is function overloading second one is operator overloading now c++ suppose two types of overloading that is same thing function overloading and operator overloading the compiler automatically decides about the appropriate functions to be called depending on the arguments now if two or more function having the same name but differ in the argument list so here function names are same but how compiler identify which function or is calling so here the compiler automatically decides about the appropriate function it decides based on the argument list it based on its argument list is going to compiler automatically identify which function is calling now look at the example here in the example int sum in the bracket int space a comma b int b semicolon so this is a function declaration and another function float sum float p comma float q if you look at these two examples here here function names are same in the first function sum is the function here sum is the function and this is function overloading but here in this example if you observe the argument list are these parameters 
here these two parameters are different with respect to the data types of argument so the meaning is int a here data type is int variable is a int data type b and here in the second example here sum is the name of the functions with float p p is the variable of data type float and q is a data type of data type float so this is an example for function overloading so the definition says functions having the same name in this example there are two functions with the same name the name sum is the name of the function with different in their argument list or parameter list if you observe this int here int and int is a data type here float and float are the two different data types so this is an example for function overloading now let us see the next slide here now what are the advantages of function overloading now here first one is it reduces the complexity of the program so the first point is it reduce the complexity of the program and the code is executed faster means another advantage is it execute this code very faster and easier to understand the flow of information and debugging here debugging is much more easier with function overloading and code maintenance is easy and next one is easier interface between programs and real world objects say here one of the advantage of oops concept what we have learned in our previous session is that we are connecting our real world object into programming so in that way this function function overloading easier for interface between the programs and real world object these are the advantages of function overloading now in the next slide now restrictions on overloaded function means what are the restrictions for function overloading here first point is each function is a set of overloaded functions must have different argument list one of the condition is that it we can have more than two function with the same name but it should be different in their in respective parameter list or argument list next if type def is used for naming the functions then function is not considered as different type so these two are restrictions of function overloading now let us move on to next slide now here function declaration now how do we work with or how do we define or how to declare overloaded function here to overload a function each overloaded function must be declared and defined separately so here what is the meaning of this if if what the definition says that there are more than two function with the same name so here if we have more than two function each and every function must be declared separately and it has to be defined separately see so this is how we do that so look at the example now in this example class function we are defining a class class function name of the class and inside that we have access public access specifier int product this is one function int product and inside this we have int p q and int r so this is function declaration this is how we declare function inside a class so next one is i am declaring one more function with the same name as the product and here observe this the parameters or argument list is different here in the first example we have seen data types or int in second example the data types are float so float x float y and float z and these arguments are separated by commas and then we are closing the class with semicolon so this is called function declaration so inside the class under public we are declaring two functions with the same name and with different argument list so this is function declaration next one is function definition or definition of overloaded function and here in the previous slide we have declared two functions here with different argument list now let us write the function definition 
So this is int function and here two colon, this is called scope resolution operator. So we are using this operator to define the function outside the class. So product is name of the function. Inside this P, Q, R, these are the argument. And inside this return product equals and here P into Q into R and L. So what is the meaning of this? We are going to product means we are multiplying P, Q and R. So it is P into Q into R with the return statement. It returns the product of these three variables. So now I'm closing the function here. So this is a definition of one function product. Now let us, we have to define one more function that is again the function name is product and here the parameters are different. So here again return product equals this is x, y, z. Here x into y into z. So return, it returns the product of these three variables. Now observe this. In, this is one more definition of a function product with different parameters. So in this example, first function, it gives the product of three variables and here observe that data types are int. In the second function, function name is product and it returns or it gives the answer as product of three variables x, y, z. So this is function definition outside a class with the help of scope resolution operator. Now let us see how do we call a function. See this is what we have learned once in the previous slide we have learned that function declaration and function definition. Next one is we have to call the function or we have to invoke the function. How do we do that? That is we have to write void main. This is a necessary function, important function. Open the bracket here. The first step is, is creation of an object or we have to define the object. How do we do that? That is name of the class with space variable name or identifier. In this example, function space f. f is an object for us. f is an object. So here function space f semicolon. Next we have to invoke the functions here f dot product 2 comma 3 comma 4 and Next one is f dot product 2.5, 3.5 and 4.5. Now this is what we have seen in the definition of this. In overloaded function, the compiler identifies automatically the functions with the parameters or with the values in the parameter. So look at the first example here. These are the values of data type int and these are the values of the data type float of float. If you observe that, now if you look at the previous slide here, observe this, here in the first function parameter with the data types int. So we are supposed to enter the value or we have to suppose to pass the value of data type integer. And for the second function here the data types are float. So we have to assign the value or we have to pass the value of data type float or it is nothing but real numbers. So this is what we have done here. So in the main function, first step is declaration of an object. Next one is we have to call the function, invoke the function. So here 2, 3, 4. So this is values are of data type integer. So this one, it call automatically the first functions with the parameter of data type int and when here when it comes to compiler when it comes to second function the values are decimal numbers or real numbers or data type float so automatically it this function is going to call the second function with the parameters of data type float so this is how the program works or this is nothing but a program with function overloading now let us see one more example, one more program here it is for function overloading. Now this is an example, a program to find area of square, rectangle and triangle using function overloading. Let us see 
the code for this R C plus plus program. Now, as usually, we have to write the program with header files, then define the class. Here, one is class F overload is the name of the class. Inside that, we have private access specifier. Under that, data type one variable is yes of data type float. So float space yes. Under public, we have functions. So here int area int a. Observe this. This is one function. Name is area, and inside that data type is int. A variable is a. And for the function definition, see in this example, we have defined the function inside a class. So here open the bracket and return a into a. This is product of the same variable or square of a variable a. Then close this function. So in this example, this is one function or function definition. Now second function int area. This is same name, same name. But observe this here only one parameter and here there are two parameters of int and l and int b. So here these two are function names are same, but these two are differ with the with respect to their argument list. So here one argument and here there are two arguments. Now open this bracket function definition. So here return l into b. So we are going to multiply or we are we are finding the product of l into b. Return l into b closing the function definition. So this is a second function. Now next one is float area. This is one more function. And here observe this. There are three parameters int a, comma int b, and int c. Now, if you observe this here, in this example, in the function name is area, one parameter, function second function name area, there are two parameters, and in the third function, function name remains same, that is area, and there are three parameters. And again, this is the function definition. The formula is s equals a plus b plus c divided by 2.0. Now after this, we are closing the class here. So this is the place we have closed the class. This is the opening bracket where we have started the class, and this is the class closed at this stage with semicolon. So this is class declaration and function definition. Next, we have to write the main function. That is void main. Open the bracket, and here the first step is. We have to create an object of a class. F F overload is the name of a class, so it is F overload space D. Here, D is nothing but the object. Name of the object is D. Now, see out here the area of square equals. Here we are invoking the function. Here we are invoking the function. So accordingly, D dot area. So here there are. There is only one parameter, so this function is going compiler identifies this with the function with one argument. So this is how the compiler execute this statements. So here d dot area we are in this example only one parameter. We supposed to enter only one value. Again, this is data type is int and this is data type. Or a value of data type integer. So four, and similarly the area of triangle. There is area d dot area two three four. So what is the meaning of this? Here there are we have given three values. So this function calls the functions with three parameters. So in this is example here there are two parameters. So it is going to call this function where we have defined with. Three arguments. So we here we are given three values. This is data type int. So we have given integer value. So then we are closing the program with this bracket. So this is how the computer or the compiler execute overloaded function. So this is an example program to work with function overloading. Students, in this session we have learned the definition of Function overloading and how do you define? How do you declare 
and how do you invoke overloaded functions now let us continue our discussion in my next session thank you very much